and and one of the main things in that story is actually the 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 staggering amount of of uh, number of people who who die you know and that that doesn't really make an impact on the on the narrative for instance uh, uh blinken yesterday went to or yesterday a couple of days ago went to uh, kiev he was actually uh, photographed on this cemetery you know the cemetery of with hun- probably hundreds of soldiers that that ukrainian soldiers you know and sort of they 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 sort of uh, are capable of framing that in some sort of heroic way you know see how we support these liberation fighters whatever but if you truly look at it then it's it's extremely cynical what's happening there so he's visiting a place uh, uh sort of uh, a place where where thousands hundreds of hundreds of, or thousands of, of of young people are are dead because of his own policies you know hello everybody This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and today I'm talking to Jacob de Jonge, who is a Dutch artist, a human rights activist, and he's working in the Netherlands for a more sane approach toward EU-Russia relations and um, peace in Europe uh, in general. Uh, ja- Jacob, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for hosting. Yeah, Jacob, great to meet uh, you. Is- yeah. A nice meeting you here again. And, you know, we already talked once last week because you and your colleague, you reached out to me because you also have a peace project in uh, in the Netherlands. You're you're in The Hague yes. and you and your colleague, you're even thinking about how to utilize neutrality again in order to uh, to uh, move something in uh, EU politics. And that's what I would like to discuss with you. I mean, your activism in the Netherlands and the view from the Netherlands from a peace activist on this entire tragedy that we are now witnessing and also the, the, this insane kind of politics inside the European Union. Uh, so, Jakob, yes. what does politics or international politics from the Netherlands look like? Um, the politics in the Netherlands, uh, international politics is quite simple. It is uh, it's almost never independent. So uh, it is uh, in the first uh, place. Is it, it? It is behind the, the the big European line that has been decided. So it's it's rare that the go- the government will ever do anything independent of EU uh, uh, policies. And of course, we all know the, how much EU policies are now behind uh, U.S. interests. So uh, it's actually very simple and very basic. Uh, we we just toe the line. And uh, what was what was kind of remarkable is maybe that our prime minister uh, Rutte, uh, of- officially he's not prime minister anymore, but still he's he's there. Uh, the, the our government has officially you know um, is, is officially not uh, not in function, but it's still there because there have not been elections yet. They will be in in, in November. Anyway, but uh, it was very, quite remarkable that our prime minister was uh, seemed to be sort of uh, on the forefront of uh, uh, arranging weapons and, uh, you know, fully behind Ukraine, supporting it, uh, you know, with with everything possible. So we wanted sort of the Netherlands under Rata really try to show themselves as, you know, we are the big supporter of, of NATO and of, of Ukraine and of the, the American approach, let's say. So there's very little, yeah, you can say it's in, it is, you know, it's an own choice by the Netherlands, but yeah, it, it's a choice maybe of, of, of Dutch elites, but it's not, uh, I, I can't say it's widely supported uh, within the Netherlands. You know, that's one of these things that I wonder in general about Europe. So the European politics is all behind what colleagues from other channels call Project Ukraine. Yeah. Um, but The people on the ground. So when I talk to people here in Switzerland, I realize some some of them just are firmly embedded in the mainstream narrative. But there's a there's a good part of my colleagues and friends who say like, yeah, I mean, anything that would end the war would be good. That yes. wouldn't oppose uh, uh, the, the, the diplomatic negotiations and who are not dogmatic. Is it the same in the Netherlands? Yeah, I would say so. Like. Um... I don't know, of course, the exact percentages of support. Uh, and that's also quite interesting that we don't really do. And uh, you've got a lot of polls o- always, but I've never really seen a poll about, you know, how much support there really is among the population for the current Ukraine uh, approach. But um, so it's, it's it's kind of an educated guess, I would say, that there's like maybe 
five or ten percent of the population who is really sort of staunchly behind uh, the the policies that that uh, of the government. Let's with uh, all round support. Uh, uh, for Ukraine uh, in, in in a military sense, let's say, because I do su- I, I do sort of I'm in favor of supporting the Ukrainian people, eh, let's say, but I, I wouldn't say I'm I'm, I'm supporting the war effort. Um, so the, and and what you, I sometimes meet them and um, they're really you know they're thoroughly you, you see they they they've read all these articles they've they they know all the details about all the weapons that they are being sent and they're sort of. They, they they're quite uh, you know they're quite educated in the in the in in the way that they read the newspapers uh, very well, uh, but in my view they are quite miseducated of course. But um, they among them you know that there's this hardline people they are there, and you see that uh, for instance we organize events in the Netherlands uh, debates sometimes, and when you post like your uh, event and it's uh, and it's not directly uh, aimed at supporting Ukraine. Then it's already suspect, and you 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 know you get these trolls, you know also Dutch trolls, they are there, and there's there there's a, there's a substantial group, and they're like they're active, they're online, they're invisible. Um, however, um, uh, I think there's a, an equally big, a much bigger group who's really like uh, really concerned about what's happening, is really worried, and is really. Um, Absolutely not supportive of what's going on, and really are, are 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 afraid. This group is also still small. I would say the group who really understands the danger where, that we're in. In fact, the danger of escalation beyond the point that we can ever return. You know, so this group is is there, is never represented in the media, but it's there. I know that I, I uh, you know, over time I got to know a lot of these people. Also, just n- not yeah ordinary people, but also former. Former politicians, uh, people who used to have a, a position in, in in society or still have. So this is also like maybe an equal group, and then there's a large part in between, who is just not, you know, either. There's many people who, yeah, for for different reasons, are are not sort of um, uh, not that involved, and it's either because they they know it's terrible and they don't want to see it. I, I've got many people who who I. I talk to and and they a reaction that I get a lot is, I know it's terrible, but I I, I can't see it. You know, I have got enough in my own life. I I turn off the television because and I know it's terrible, but I I'm, I don't f- I feel I can do anything about it. So, and there's this a uh, big group that knows that something is wrong, and they're just yeah, let let there be peace, man. Let's I don't know. Uh, they, they're maybe not that concerned, but they're also not absolutely not eagerly supporting the war effort by NATO. So um, I don't know if it's, it's sort of clear, but this is how I see it, you know, the extremes and then the, the big middle who just in general doesn't want war, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the middle that doesn't want war, mm-hmm. one reason why it's relatively um, simple for to for them to be in the camp of, oh, well, weapons are maybe the right way is yeah. because it is such a, it's such a uh, very kind of a very obvious picture of Russia invading and its its neighboring country. Now, of there's course. reasons for that. And we know those. We know what happened. And, and I think you and I and others, we, we are aware of the complexity of it. But especially for this group of people who just want to get on with their lives and have peace and switch off the TV, for them, the, the, that that complexity, I think, falls off the uh, falls away, right? And then what think, you see is yeah. ta- Russian tanks in Ukraine. Hmm. I think, uh, yeah, there, there's this, this. If we're talking about the middle part, yeah, I think you can maybe may, make a split in this middle part and say there's like passive supporters of the anti-war movement. We are really anti-war, so and we are explicit. We know we follow what's going on. We need we see the terror. And we want to stop it. I think there's the majority of the of the middle part is like passive supporter of that. There's also maybe a passive support of the weapons because they see what you see on television. They see the invasion. They up. Send said weapons, but I, I'm not gonna go activist on it. But it's like, yeah, it's good that let them send weapons, you know. So that's true, and I think, uh, yeah, of course, the the narrative. I think this war showed me more than ever. I mean, I, I have not been. I, I've been sort of uh, working other conflicts, less less high profile conflicts, but uh, yeah, it's all about the narrative. That's now I, I, what I've seen. Like the narrative is 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 super important. 
even even sometimes it, it seems like it's more important that what than what's actually actually happening on the battlefield. It seems like shaping shaping how how people ordinary people think about this war in order for them not to sort of start protesting or whatever. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite stunning because and and one of the main things in that story is actually the 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 staggering amount of of uh, number of people who who die you know and that that doesn't really make an impact on the on the narrative for instance uh, uh blinken yesterday went to or yesterday a couple of days ago went to uh, kiev he was actually uh, photographed on this cemetery you know a cemetery of with hun- probably hundreds of soldiers that that ukrainian soldiers you know and sort of they 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 sort of uh, are capable of framing that in some sort of heroic way, you know, see how we support these liberation fighters, whatever. But if you truly look at it, then it's it's extremely cynical what's happening there. So he's visiting a place, uh, uh, sort of uh, a place where where thousands, hundreds of hundreds of, or thousands of, of of young people are are dead because of his own policies. You know, uh, if if you realize that that that's the true story. It's it's chilling, you know. It's it's absolutely chilling, and we know we sort of. And what I want to say with that is sort of they they're capable of making a narrative that that is sort of acceptable to to walk on a cemetery where you, so one of the guilty parties is just walking around, sort of as a noble person as though he's supporting freedom. It, and while the reality at the same moment you know is that he pushed these people into their deaths in a way, you know. I agree. And, and I is, agree. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that so is we're not that able we... to read that anymore because there's this narrative of heroism and supporting democracy and and uh, you know fighting against the Russian imperialism, etc. So that that's the power of the narrative that we don't see the the evil of that picture anymore. It, uh, for me, it's an evil picture. Yeah, um, indeed. Yeah. The amazing thing is that they turn it around. They turn it into uh, Blinken is paying homage to the fallen soldiers, to the to the heroes, and that's what in every single war they do. They yeah. send young, mostly young boys, yeah. who, who, who who fall for something. They've pushed them into a war, yeah. into their deaths, into their graves, and on their yeah. graves they have the picture taken as saying like, "Oh, I'm." I am here a great statesman. They do that every single time. And what's fantastic this time is usually you do that with your own population, right? Usually you push your own young yeah. ones, the old the yeah. old guys in the back, they push the young ones into their graves. Yeah. This time we've got even an American who's a, the Americans who are able to push the Ukrainians into their grave. Uh, and 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 well, the, the, the Russians too on the other side. It's just, it's extremely cynical. Extremely cynical. And, and the power of narratives... Is, is capable of sort of changing that around in in the heads of people and that is um so it's very strong that uh, you know the, the 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 yeah yeah so yes people are that's that's one of the main reasons why people don't see the evil that's taking place and don't yet start to uh protest enough let's say yeah and one more thing that i noticed here uh, in switzerland during my stay here um the there's an estimate error also going on a a friend of mine estimated you know the russians they're they're dying uh, hundreds of thousands of dead two three four hundred thousand he was his was his estimate and on the other side i asked him and what do you think how many ukrainians then said well maybe maybe up to fifty thousand so the guess is that the the losses on the russian side are much much bigger than which also comes from this whole narrative that russia is losing russia is losing they're so weak and uh, the russians are all dying and it's just a matter of time until a regime change in in moscow comes because the 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 army's going to crumble and that that part of the narrative is also quite important for europeans then to basically accept that if, if some ukrainians die the heroes some heroes and um, mm. I think we will learn the true numbers, which will be, they will be shocking beyond compare. I mean, some yeah, of the yeah. estimates are the, are the exact opposite. Um, yeah, it's seeping through uh, now and then. Uh, I, I don't exactly know the, the exact reference, but I, I saw there was sort of an action by, I think, a phone company to celebrate the 400,000 died soldiers. It was a mistake. They, they weren't supposed to say that number, you know. So they had to correct uh, immediately because, you know, people know it, actually. They they know it, but they don't want to know it, maybe. It, it seeps through now and then, yeah. But it, it leaves it leaves us guessing, right? And yeah. it is something that I wouldn't have thought this is possible because what we are having what we are having now is a World War One 
type trench warfare where, yeah. where, where you you an attrition warfare where yeah. you where you wore each other down in the worst way possible i mean and we have these these movies in europe right about how horrible the first world war was verdun and we have these movies about a, a merry christmas and so on that that try to depict the, the lunacy of trench warfare uh, yes. and and we have the same thing again and we have the same problem as we had in a hundred years ago that the same narratives are spun and then you have people who at home read the newspapers in 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 all quiet and tranquility and to go oh good like the front will move oh, they're gonna go through yeah. exactly the same <laughs> how, I, it's, I wonder it's how terrible you... and also the lying eh? you see the desperate lying in order to continue this war from our side and that is my main concern like we are so much pushing this war like that's the reason why we are so so much um, uh, engaged in this thing is that that i was actually shocked by the abs utter lack of any peace initiative from the west and yeah. Uh, not the, yeah not only that but you see now for instance it, you you see like at the current situation you see this about rabotino no there's this mm -hmm. village that they they supposedly took they don't didn't really take it i think because it's a gray zone you know you can't really be there and and be alive because it's it's all covered yeah. by art artillery, but the the, the way they uh, they talk about it now in the media as though the great victory they they broke the Russian line etc. Um, and that, why do they do that? Because they want they desperately want this sort of victory. Why to continue? Because if there's no victory, people will get desperate and will maybe stop. But they have to sort of they're pushing out this victory, which is isn't a real victory because they're, they're just slaughtered there at this at this place. It's not a real breakthrough. And if you if you follow the news, you 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 know it's not a real breakthrough. It's just like a, a fire back. You know, people get in, Ukrainians get in there, and they're, they're getting slaughtered. So, but we have to push this narrative that this is a victory. You know, finally we broke through the Russian lines. You know, and why are we are this way we are pushing ukrainians further and further you know you have got this victory now you go you need to go on you need to go on we are sort of with a whip you okay go on go on go to your death and that is so extremely cynical um yeah so this is just what i had to say about that it is we are desperate for them to and of course you know what's behind it i think and and you probably have discussed it already before but we, we we need to apparently the Americans want to continue this at least until the re-election of Biden or something like that, you know. So that's also the thing. It's it's not being nobody thinks they're really gonna win this, you know. I don't believe that the Americans even believe that that they're gonna win anything. But it's just the fact that they can hurt Russia. That's great for them, you know. Because indeed, of of course, also a lot of Russians are dying. So that's a great thing for them. Um, and they need this sort of image of being tough and powerful and until the elections, you know. So so please let the slaughter go on until the elections. Then after that we can we can quit, something like that. So it's so utterly, utterly cynical. And it's um yeah, it's it's truly shocking, actually.